website has changed, number one. Number two, I was supposed to have flashlights to give everybody, and FedEx didn't deliver them. And then, yeah, and, and then third of all, you know, I have some collateral over there that some people have looked at. We've got mints and some little webcam covers and stuff because, as David mentioned, we just got acquired by Bluecoat. So all of the stuff I have with logos on it, probably going to be a thing of the past soon. So I'm just trying to clean out my closet. So, so how many people here besides the vendors have heard of us, of Elastica? That's great. So because it, it's a new space, it's the Casby space. And before I even start, I will tell you that a little bit about myself. I worked, I directed network security at UPS, which is why I just bashed FedEx. Um, for 10 years, and then I decided to try my hat at sales and moved over to Qualys and worked there for six years. And then I thought the grass was a little greener and wanted to go back to big corporate life and went to Ernst & Young. And I lasted two years and said, I need to go back to sales and I need to work for a smaller company. So my decision to move to Elastica was based on the technology. I saw a demo and thought, why didn't I think of that? And I'm sure anybody from Netscope and Sky High probably can agree, like, duh, I could have made a lot of money on this. So I like the technology, so that's why I'm here. And my last apology is I am not a PowerPoint person. I don't like to do PowerPoints. I'm probably one of the few salespeople that doesn't do PowerPoints. So I forgive me for my really crafty putting together this whole thing. And so funny story about that, the first, time, first meeting I ever had in sales, I was scared to death. And I went in to see Dan Reynolds, the CISO of Omnicom. If any of you guys know him, he's very down to earth and he doesn't pull any punches. And I walked in and I started my PowerPoint and he said, get the F out of here. I don't do PowerPoints. Next time, come back without a PowerPoint. And from that point on, I'm like, I'll never do a PowerPoint again. So forgive my thing that I have up here that I threw together, but also I want to make this really interactive. And so I, you know, I apologize if you wanted to hear all about Elastica and see a demo, but I decided let's just make it interactive because you've already sat through, you know, learning a whole bunch about other vendors and I would just rather kind of make it interactive. So this is basically so that you guys have something to think about. So I'm just gonna throw out some stats and you can think about it and I'll weave what Elastica does in it. Okay, you all ready? And I'm not drinking a beer, I already had two. So. I have to drive after I get off the train. So what's in the shadows? So I figured let's decipher the buzzwords because I've been in IT for, I stopped counting after 25 years, and we've been through all of the different buzzwords and you know, data warehousing, big data, APTs, now we got CASB. So I wanted to just decipher them for you. So one of the big buzzwords is shadow IT. The technical term is it's the use of IT systems and resources without the knowledge or explicit consent of the organization's IT department. So I translated it for you. Stop hindering me from doing my job. So my first question is, how many people have had to get a document out, couldn't send it via email because it was too big, and so you said, hey, let me just slap it up on Drive, and then I'll let the guy know, here's the link. We've all done it, right? And we're all security people. And we're security people and we do it, so imagine all the other users that do that as well. Shadow data, that's the second problem. If that file that I needed to get out to somebody had sensitive data in it and nobody's looking at it, who knows what the other users are doing out there on all these file sharing you know, apps as well in the cloud. So the way I look at it, I didn't even want to use file sharing when I worked at Qualys because I didn't know who was going to see it because I didn't understand the sharing. Nobody taught me how to share things or whether it was shared with the whole world. I didn't know if the boss was going to see it. So for the folks that go out and, you know, the ones that don't know and unknowingly share things across the planet, that's where shadow data comes in. So technical term, all potential risky data exposures lur lurking in sanctioned cloud apps. And when I say sanctioned, that's basically your company has sanctioned it for use and they have an enterprise account. You all log in with your enterprise email. And, and then due to the lack of knowledge of the type of data being uploaded and how it's shared. So organizations until the CASB space came in had no idea there's no visibility in the cloud, right? Because we all have the perimeter protection, but once you move out to the cloud, who's gonna see it? Nobody can see what you're doing. And that brings us to CASB and you can notice my little thing Elastica plus blue coat, which ironically, it's not officially, it was announced, but it's not done for another month, but yet we already have logos out there. That's how fast things move. So CASB basically is Cloud Access Security Brokers. That's what the acronym stands for. And it basically empowers companies to actually see what's going out 
what the users are doing in the cloud, what apps they're using, and what they're putting out there. And so the CASB, you know, the CASB space is basically giving you the ability to have insight into that and, and know what's going on and, and the ability to protect against it. So translation, here's your flashlight, because CASB allows you to actually see what you couldn't see before. Any questions so far? OK. So this is where I fall short on PowerPoint, but I figured I'd give you guys some stats. So in a shadow IT perspective, and for those competitors out there, like I found a lot of stats on your websites too, but I figured like I don't want you guys to recognize that I'm pulling your information, but they're all pretty appropriate. So if you look at any, anybody in the CASB space, the numbers are alarming. So basically, if you go out to any organization and say, so how many apps do you really think the users are using, even if they're not supposed to? And most of them say, eh, 40 to 50. But based on what we've seen with our customers, you know, it's about 774. So it's a big gap. Sorry, big gap. And some of the other data that you guys might be interested in is um, three of the most popular apps that users use, whether they're supposed to or not, are O365, Dropbox, and Google Drive. And all three of them, you can upload files, and everybody, if you're not, you know, if you're not careful, sensitive data leaks. Um, the three with the most traffic were Skype, Box, and YouTube, which you can imagine, because uh, everybody watches YouTube and the cute, the cute little kittens. Um, and then the emerging apps, which is another thing, because you know, there's apps that we all know about, but then we're seeing all these new apps that all of a sudden users are like, well, I just need that to do my marketing presentation, and so then they're going out to these apps that nobody's heard of. So just some stats for you guys. So Elastica, in a nutshell, we're, the, you know, we're that layer, we call it the cloud sock, where we basically take traditional firewalls, IDS, IPS, uh, SIM, you know, DLP, I always call it DLP on steroids, um, we take all of that and, and move it, what was traditionally on-prem, we're moving to the cloud, and we're a SaaS application as well, so we put that layer in the cloud and give you full visibility end-to-end -end of what's going on out there. So we offer, this is my only bit of marketing speech, we do offer free risk, shadow IT risk assessment. It's basically, you know, just securely uploading a firewall log or a proxy log. That's where Blue Coat comes in, I think. And, and so then we can, within, I'd say an hour, generate a really nice 20-page report that shows you all of the apps your users are out using that you didn't even know about and the ones you did and gives you the ability to put side-by-side -side comparisons of all of these apps, you know, based on file sharing or, or collaboration. And you can see which ones are more risky based on your own policies and what you think is important when you're choosing a cloud app. Um, and so part of my collateral pile over there is a sample risk assessment. And this is what we provide to you, you know, totally tailored to your organization. So if you want to just grab one and see all of the information, what we provide to you after the risk assessment looks exactly what this pamphlet is, but it's based on your organization's users' behavior. And so now we'll go to the next one. So these, I know you, it's hard to see, so I made a much easier slide, but basically, you know, we, you can see between, you know, auditing what apps that the, the folks are using, detecting the threats, what they're put in, putting up there, and you know, what their behavior looks like based on a whole algorithm of behavioral analysis. Then you can write rules and policies to protect against it. And then there's a full SIM kind of backend correlation engine so that you can go, you know, to a specific point in time and drive down to the details and know what that user was doing when they were doing it. So to make it easy for those that may have forgotten your glasses like me, I can boil it down really quick. So, so to give you an idea, 25% of files per user are broadly shared. It's an average, but this is based on what we've seen. So if you figure, you know, there's 100% of people using the, using the, the file sharing apps. 74% is within the company, which is okay, but it's still sometimes you don't want to share data within the company if it's sensitive. Like, uh, hey, guess what? Blue Coat's going to buy Elastica. You know, you don't want word to get out. Um, and if we didn't use Elastica ourselves and eat our own dog food, we probably all would have known about it. Um, and then, and then the, the scary part is 25% of those files are broadly shared, so whether it's externally facing or just completely publicly. And if you think you're sharing something externally and then somebody sees that file and they share it and they share it and they share it, it, it just like exponentially grows and it's, it's just huge. So we, the sensitive data part, 12.5% um, of those files above actually contained compliance-related data, and 
54% was personal information, PII. 31, let's see, I don't have my glasses. 31% was health-related records. And then there was also 15% of PCI-related you know, compliance issues, which I, there's not many people out there anymore that don't have to be PCI compliant. So if you're actually storing PCI data and you're sharing it with the world, it's a big problem. So any questions about those stats? Yeah, and see, see, that's why I didn't put any slides, because I'll just talk to it. So basically, there's a couple ways that Elastica can do it. So the audit piece, which is the risk assessment, is just uploading a firewall log. And then we have two ways. For the sanction apps that your enterprise has sanctioned and has an uh, enterprise account, we piggyback on the APIs of those cloud apps. So as long as the app, the, the app vendor has very good APIs that we'll actually get good data out of, then you can just use those APIs. And so there's nothing to deploy. You don't have to do anything except check the box and then supply your credentials for that admin account in box. And the great thing about the APIs for sanctioned apps is not only can it tell you moving forward what's out there, it also looks at everything historically so that you know, OK, oh, holy crap. You know, now that we've got this product and you know, we've bought this solution, look at all the stuff that's been shared that we didn't even know about. And you can immediately unshare it, you could take it down, you could, you could, do, you could quarantine it, you can alert on it. So, so the API piece is for sanction apps. Second piece is what we call our gatelets or forward proxies. So basically, based on the traffic that you want to send to, be, to, to have scanned for content, that would go through, it would be forward proxied through our gateway, and that's when you can do the real time blocking and, and scanning and the content engine and using the data science, another buzzword, but the data science to actually scan for content, context, structure. It has the ability to tell you the difference between a doctor's resume and a medical record. And, and so that's the content IQ based part of Elastica. So between the two, for your sanctioned and unsanctioned, not only can you see what has already been out there and is dangerous and is, you know, wholly, you know, whatever, because we're sharing this stuff and we shouldn't. But then moving forward from there, the gateway allows you to then take protection to never let it happen again. It is my high level description of it. Does that, does that answer your question? No problem. So another couple cute facts, I guess, if you call them cute. Um, exposures by industry. This was really interesting because healthcare had the most exposures that we've seen, 16%. Next comes consumers and retail, telecom, financial, education, and then Technology, 1%, because I guess we're all smart. We don't do that kind of stuff. So it's just you know, throwing out numbers to you guys, because I know you're tired and you know, had a couple beers. So. Um, so then some more. So moving to the cloud, I thought this was interesting. 82% of companies reported that they save money by moving to the cloud. Because you save money, and it's, it eases your users, and it's collaboration, and, and all the great reasons why you use the cloud apps. But for those that haven't bitten the bullet, their primary reasons are security, 61%, and information governance, which I kind of put together because that's where the compliance piece comes in. And only 56% trustability of cloud providers to protect that sensitive data that they're entrusting to them. So my question is, do you guys? You know, I, I don't. So that's one more reason why I joined the company because I'm like, that's such a great idea because I have done it myself, so protect me from being stupid. So. Just something to think about. Uh, Are you protecting from the provider, or you're protecting from your own users that are going to make a leap? OK, so it's, it's basically, so you, your organization, you're protecting your organization against user, you know, users doing things they shouldn't do or, or sharing things they shouldn't share. Or, it, like, again, I didn't want to bore you with a million slides, but it can, based on the user's behavior, it can tell you. You know, John logged in from New York, and five minutes later, he logged in from Hong Kong. That couldn't be, right? And so it's based on the user's behavior. You can set thresholds to say, well, I know that John comes in at 8 and leaves at 5, and he downloads one mega data, and all of a sudden, he's dumping all the, like, 20 giga data from Salesforce.com. Ah, I think he's leaving. You know, so there's so many different use cases for what you can pull out of that. Like, maybe there's not a really well-defined process when somebody quits and removing their credentials and getting them off the system. So you could see that too. And you could see, well, geez, why is Susie logging in? She got fired six weeks ago. So those are little use cases, but the, big, the biggies are the shadow data with the sensitive data being leaked out there because I don't know the exact number, and I know I have this 
on there, but the, I, the, I think it was like $1.6 billion one of the health companies had to pay because of like one file that got shared that had you know, PII or, or HIPAA violations. And again, I don't remember numbers really well, but I know it was a sum of money just because of one file that got shared. Does that kind of help the SOPI? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, no. I mean, we could. it would probably be detected because then all of a sudden the anonymous behavior will be all over the place, right? Because all of a sudden somebody's trying to log in and is messing up because it goes across apps. So, you know, all of a sudden somebody had 15 invalid logins, and I hope that's not what your policy is, but like three missed logins across all of the apps, then you kind of know something's up because somebody's just trying to break into these systems. So it's, it's really the behavioral analysis that, that can clue you in even if the provider got breached. But our solution is more, or even just CASB solutions are more just the layer between your organization and what they're doing out in the cloud. Does that help? Okay. So, I'm just, oh, well, I, see I don't like these animations, but. So basically the other thing is that we do also do shadow data risk assessments as well, which, you know, unless things change are free. And that will help show you, you know, where your risk is, what, you know, what your compliance risk is, what's out there, all the content, and we put it in a very similar format to this so that you know exactly what's out there. And, and just for the vendors, lesson learned the hard way, when we were offering up these shadow data risk assessments, people were going in and reme the, the prospects were going in and remediating everything because we didn't lock it down to maybe you could remediate five things. So they basically unshared everything and found all their risks and took care of it all. Said, well, now we don't need you anymore. But, but that's not really the, the point or the method because it's really got to be continuously monitoring what's going on because it, it just happens all the time. And that's a, another, you know, another point to what Elastica does is continuously monitoring because between the gateway, the forward proxy gateway to, to actually monitor the traffic and, and analyze the traffic real time, there's also the API so you can go back in time. So I'm being redundant, but that's basically at a high level what we do. And, I can, I can actually share these slides with you guys if you really want them, but, but basically, you know, the data, the shadow data risk assessment will give you, will show you everything. So it's just a matter of then what do you want to do about it, because that's the hard part. And luckily, you don't have to go in and file by file remediate. You can do it in bulk. You can do it automatically based on a policy you built, you know. So it just, the user... It's user friendly, so you're not going to need a whole team of people to, to do this because it's, you know, you can just dig down and see what's going on and you can do something about it. Um, and I'm losing my voice. And so, so we do offer the shadow data risk assessment. And then just my summary this is my marketing slide. So if you're interested in either or, um, there's no commitment. It's just, you know, I personally, as a security professional for all these years, you know, just take a look at it because somebody's going to get in trouble. And, and, I'm afraid of it, and I know it's kind of like Big Brother, but I don't want to be the person that shared something confidential and then I get busted for it. Um, and if you want to chat with me about a demo, you know, we can set up a demo. It's pretty simple. I didn't want to do that because my luck with demos is not very good. Um, free shadow IT assessment, shadow data assessment, a free trial, um, more information. Or if somebody wants to teach me how to really do PowerPoint, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, because like I said, I don't really concentrate on PowerPoint. So um, are there any, you know, any questions? And, and you can ask me about Blue Coat because I can't really give you a whole bunch of information I just found out on Friday. But well, I can give you my personal opinion because I get asked the question a lot, like how does it impact Elastica and Sky High and Netscope? So I'm giving you guys all props too. But I'm sure you guys, anybody that's still here from those, the competitor side to us, I mean, that was the first question everybody asked. And I think it's Microsoft Play to acquire Adalom, and this is my only opinion, um, so that now they can build in that security to their product because they needed that. And I have a feeling that Adalom will become a, and I'm sorry if anybody's here from Adalom, but I think they're just gonna be a one-stop shop for Microsoft because I don't think Microsoft's gonna invest in them you know, covering all of their competing vendor apps out there. So that's just my personal opinion. No, I, I, I honestly, that would be, uh, so let me make sure I understand your question, so ask it again. So, so um, do, do you require additional Microsoft 
No, just as long as they have a robust API that we can piggyback on, and then and you know they they offer it up so that people can use it or our organizations can use it, then we don't need anything from Microsoft except that they let us use the API, and then it falls on the actual on the the organization side that that if they want to use that API, they have to just provide the information so that they can actually you know, log into the admin console with O365 or however it works. So, no problem. Yeah. Have you partnered with any, uh, you know, cloud companies or service providers on kind of leveraging this, you know, this, this cloud offering? Um, that's a really good question. I can tell you that our biggest partner was Cisco. And that was one of the reasons I joined Elastica, because we had just announced this huge partnership with Cisco, which I took completely seriously and went out and just partnered up with them because, you know, Cisco has a really good offering and a very huge portfolio, and we actually completed our integration with their CWS, so it's just a one-button click, and nobody has to log into Alaska. You just click a button, and you get the audit done because they just use the, the tools that they're using through Cisco. Now, first question I ask is, now what? Because... Now, basically, we just got acquired by one of their competitors. So it's going to be interesting. I haven't cut ties with the Cisco folks because it's not over till the fat lady sings. But we, so we do partner with Cisco. We partner, we also do partner, we have integrations with single sign-on, which makes things easier. Um, sim vendors like Splunk and ArcSight. And, and we also have an at-rest API if you just want to pull the data and plug it in your own homegrown sim or on a sim with that we don't integrate with. Um, and I could give you, you know, if you want, I can give you the list of the folks who are, go, you know, on our website it says, but we, you know, we're pretty partner friendly. In fact, when I first joined, we didn't do any direct business. It was always through a partner. And generally, we tried to partner with technology providers, not just resellers, but we work really well with resellers as well. So does that answer your question? And if there's, uh, you know, if there's, you know, you have an idea for a really great idea who, you know, to partner with, and it would help you as an organization, you know, we're pretty small, so we can get things done pretty quick. Well, we were small, I should say. Thank you very so, much. Is it good?